guys, Flippin' Landlord Ninja here. Kevin the Property Prince. And we are Two, Two guys, guys Take on Real Estate. Two Guys Take on Real Estate. So we're here to talk about how we actually started our company and what's helped grow our wealth throughout the years. Absolutely, we started off before this was a thing, I think, and uh, <laughs> we thought we were blazing a new path. Yes, and uh, then Brendan Turner decided to coin the phrase and took all the credit. Man, God damn we can get a couple of royalties off this. Can the guy buy us a cup of coffee? We could ask him. <laughs> sure. <laughs> He's out in Hawaii, I believe. Uh, so. Good for him. Well, we, you know, I, it's not out in Hawaii. Cold weather is not out in Hawaii. Like right here. Yeah, and uh, so we're sitting here in the cold weather dealing with some cold temperatures. What what kind of temperatures? Uh, it's 56, 56 degrees. degrees. Burr. It's cold in here, Matt. Yep, it is. <laughs> well, <laughs> Look at these funny puns we're using. <laughs> so yeah, so once as always, we're here to pay it forward, teach you from uh, our mistakes so you don't have to make the same ones. Absolutely, and if you find any of this information relevant or valuable, please take a moment, subscribe to our videos, like them, and share with your friends. Yes, yeah, so just, you know, just tap that like button, just a little tap, yeah. tap, tap around. Flex that index finger and help us out a little bit with the, with the click of a button, we'd appreciate it. Okay, so you're in the Burr method and the first letter is B. B. So what does that stand for, Kev? That stands for buy, Matt. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, we got that down. Woohoo! So that's the easy part. It's telling you what the B stands for. Now, what are you buying? Well, you're buying a distressed or undervalued property. Absolutely. So how do you find those properties? Well, they're everywhere. I mean, they literally everywhere. are just, everywhere. They're just lying out in the street. Sadly, I mean, that's exactly what it is. You just need to know how to tune in to those deals, find those deals, and make sure you act on them. Yeah, so there's uh, you can do it in numerous ways. Uh, we you can buy from a wholesaler. Absolutely, um, you can uh, work and social network your way through uh, by joining real estate groups and yeah. uh, talk to a bunch of different investors out there. You could do uh, driving for dollars. We have a video on here about that, right? One of my personal favorites. I love driving for dollars. Um, you can also do bandit signs, which I hear that you know you're not exactly uh, doing that well these days, but you can try that out. And you need to be careful in your market if it's actually illegal to uh, put those out because otherwise you're just gonna get taken down and you might get <laughs> you know, right. yelled at by the police. <laughs> yeah, sure. You can send postcards. I mean, you can work with any kind of approach that might be a numbers game where you, you put your information out there or you contact a zillion people and eventually you get a deal. Yeah, you can buy a list from like list source and other different uh, prop stream. You can build a list with, right. you can talk to code enforcement, get a list there. Uh, so yeah, many different ways you're going to find a property that's undervalued or there's some kind of distress that you can buy it for you know less than it's worth. Absolutely. And that's the key part of it is buying the property right. You want to buy something with some upside potential, uh, something that's undervalued or something you can do to the property that'll create and add value. All right. So next on our bird journey is the R, the first R, right? Are you sure? Uh, <laughs> God. Yes, I am. And what does that stand for? That stands for rehab. All right. So this is where you're building that value, where you're going to look at different aspects of the property that you can put value in, whether it be sweat equity or you hire our contractors to do that work. Uh, but you, that's where you're building that value that you can uh, increase the equity in the property. Uh, Absolutely right. This is something where you're taking a property, you're making significant improvements for less than the improvements are worth. So if you're going to create a value of $75,000 of rehab work, you're doing it at a fraction of that cost. How you do that, there's a variety of ways. Yeah. So you want to look at things that actually add the most value. So for instance, you know, popping on a roof, especially if you can negotiate it just pop it right on, Matt. Just pop that roof right on. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's that simple. It's just like a Lego. Just boop. I did that before breakfast this morning. Popped the roof on real quick. <laughs> came into the office, hung out. Exactly. Well, <laughs> God damn it. Uh, yeah, so you're going to basically work with a contractor, get a contractor that you can actually work well with and get the cost down so that, whereas someone else would look at that value of maybe $20,000, you're getting it done for maybe twelve. dollars Now you all of a sudden you have $8,000 of value you just generated. That's absolutely the key. And that type of thing applies to all the different aspects of the property. Maybe we're talking about plumbing work, electrical work. Chances are you're not somebody that can do all of that work yourself, or you're not inclined to do all that work yourself. And you want to staff it out to people that, uh, that can do that at a, uh, a very discounted price, a very favorable price for you. Yeah. So the top things I would say that you can build value in a rental property are going to be your big items like your roof. 
adding heating systems, uh, upgrading uh, electrical, uh, wa uh, your water lines, sure. kitchens, bathrooms, right. flooring, just paint. Simple yeah. thing yeah. of painting a property looks, you know, it low cost, but it makes such a difference in the, its value and its perceived value. Absolutely right. So those are the big ticket items and you want to stay away from um, accidentally or inappropriately renovating things that have very little return on your costs. So uh, going really above and beyond on renovating, over renovating, you might call it a kitchen or a bathroom, uh, or maybe some some other elements of the property yes. that you're investing $20,000 in and you're only getting $20,000 of value in, that's not a great way to use your money. Uh, that's smart, Kevin, yeah, exactly. Uh, and the way you kind of figure out what is in your market and what actually is, you know, what the expectations are in your market it's going to be you can go on to zillow mm -hmm. and basically just you know google what other uh, apartments in your area have what are the, what is the common things that they have if they all have granite well you're going to want to put granite but if they're all laminate countertops putting in granite might not make the most sense it might not bring you that extra value uh so you got to want to really look at what's out there and kind of compare absolutely right so doing your rehab is important but doing it in the most cost effective way is the chief point you're trying to bring away here Okay, guys, so you renovated the property. It's beautiful. Oh, my God. Now what do you do, Kev? You retire, Matt. Wow. Oh, no, no that's no, not what that no, R stands no, no. for? Oh, no. <laughs> Stop the video. Ah! So you are now going to rent this out. You're going to find a great qualified tenant that you can get maximum value so you uh, for that unit. Absolutely. Renting the property out is incredibly important because it's going to help you in the later stage, the next R. You need to have a great lease with a very favorable, favorable rental rate uh, on this property so you can use that rental as income to help you qualify for the next upcoming R on the video. So how, how do you go about finding a great tenant? Uh, well, <laughs> there's a lot of different ways. Um, honestly, there's uh, options where you could post something on Facebook, uh, uh, usually like a marketplace ad, that'd be a great way to go. Um, something where you can put in um, minimal work where you can make an ad and have people go through some basic steps to inquire about it and pass a screening process. True. Uh, and if you, if you haven't already, if you've got, been working on building up your team, so, such as like ourselves, pro finding a great property manager, they can do a lot of this for you. They can go out and find that tenant. Once you got it ready, they'll go out and market it. They'll go take professional photos, drone footage, 3D tours, all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. that basically they'll attract the best tenant. They're going to go through their screening process that they've taken years to develop and handle that all for you. And I'll tell you, they'll, gonna, they'll charge you a fee for doing this. Now, what you need to decide is that fee important uh, enough to uh, forego or not. And I would like to suggest that there's a lot of other things that come with a professional management company going through that process uh, that help protect you, which the number one thing you would have to worry about if you're inexperienced with rentals is a discrimination situation. Good point. Yes. But there's a lot of things you have to worry about in terms of the application process, the tenant screening process. And for somebody that's a rookie that's not well versed in this stuff, you may be inviting an opportunity for disaster. This is true. I mean, if you even just marketing it and you know, saying the wrong thing in the marketing can be considered discrimination. Something so simple as saying, oh, Section 8 welcomed or something along that line. So you think yep. you're just doing the right thing and trying to attract and help, you know, some people that have a hard time finding an apartment. Located in a nice neighborhood oh near a church, oh, uh, something Jesus like Christ. that. Yeah. All these, oh, Jesus Christ is right. <laughs> All these kind of things could play into this kind of a situation where the most innocuous thing, the most well-intentioned thought in, a, in an ad even could result in a discrimination situation for you. So if you're not well versed in it, we really highly recommend finding a property management company like ourselves to help you with that um, rental. Many people find it well worth their time because screening tenants, showing a property, getting everybody onboarded, it's very time consuming. Even just showing an apartment can be an incredibly frustrating situation because many people not properly screened and brought through the proper process simply don't show up for the showings that you've taken your time to schedule with. Yep. Okay, so we're on to the third R, and that stands for... Retire! Really uh, still on, man. Not retire. When? When, Matt? When do we get to retire? This is why we're doing never. this. We're never retiring. All That's right, it. fine. So This I, is fun. <laughs> this, is, this is fun? Well, this part. Are we, are we having fun? Are you guys having fun? 
Well, <laughs> stop having fun and start working on refinancing. Financing. Yes. Uh, so now you've you know gone out, you've talked to a bunch of different banks, you're gonna get the best rate possible, pin them against each other, and they're gonna come out and do what's called a cash out refinance. Well, sweet, that mean that just sounds fantastic. Anything that talks about cash out. I'm your guy. So uh, <laughs> let's talk about what happens with a cash out refinance. What money are we taking out of the property? So what you're having them uh, do is they're going to, you know, uh, look at your LTV. So different banks will have different LTVs, different times of uh, the cycle of uh, real estate. So right now I, you're hearing a lot of people talk about maybe a 70% LTV. And what does that mean? Well, if the value of the property is $100,000, they're going to give you or loan you a mortgage of $70,000. Thanks for using simple numbers like that because I, I was worried you were going to do something tricky and I was like, like $252,000, yeah, $300,000. I was, like, uh, uh, <laughs> was going to ask Kevin. I, got, I, have, I need to appear smart on camera. Uh, so awesome. <laughs> so an LTV of 70% nets you in a $100,000 property, uh, $70,000 that you pull out. Now you have that money in your hand? Well, yeah, essentially. So it depends on how you actually bought the property. So right. let's say you bought the property with your own cash or you know, using your 401k or an IRA, whatever it might be, you bought it with your own cash, you renovated it with your own cash, so you're out, uh, let's just say $60,000. You bought it for 40,000, you put $20,000 into I got it, you. Yep. and now they send out an appraisal or appraiser, they come out and they're like, it, you did such a great job here, wow, amazing, you got it rented out, it's now worth $100,000. Oh, okay. And they're saying, the bank then literally, you know, on the refinance, hands you a check for 70 grand. Uh, there's no other liens, I'm, I'm guessing, on the property. So you get it, you know, all of your money back that you put in, into the property. I was into it for 60. I've now gotten all that money back and? Plus an extra 10K. $10,000 more. And what else is with the property? Well, it's tax-free, first off. That's, that's extra 10K. That tax is a nice free. thing. That is a nice thing. And I probably have some equity. You have $30,000 in equity. $30,000. In my equity bank account, basically. Yes, your absolutely. Bank so I have thirty thousand dollars in equity that I've earned for myself. I basically have ten thousand uh, dollars in money more than I started with. Correct. And all because I bought this property and did some renovation work and rented you it. You bought it undervalued, and then you put sweat equity into the property and increased its value. Well, why isn't everybody doing this, Matt? Why? Well, because it, it's a simple process. It's just not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. And you know what? Not everybody knows about this. This is true. Uh, so we're happy to share this information with you. So you now know about it and you can maybe look at this as a potential strategy for you to acquire property. Okay. So you're at the final step, the last R, and Oof. that stands for... We have earned it. Retirement. <sighs> I'm sorry. <sighs> no, no. These jokes no, doing anything yet. for you, people? No. <laughs> We are repeating the Absolutely. process. Absolutely, that worked out so great. You know we're gonna repeat this and do it again. Exactly, based on our example, you got your $60,000 back. And you have an extra 10K. And my favorite, $30,000 in equity. Exactly. So, so why not do that again? Right, take that money that you have, buy another property, All day. rinse and repeat. Absolutely. And uh, you know, you're renting it out, you have a great property management company, so you're cash flowing. Uh, and now you can go do that again. Why wouldn't you do that 10, 20, 30 times? Oh, no, no real reason. Uh, maybe just you know, getting stuck on one of those steps, which is probably buying the property, finding a great opportunity that to buy great. the property. So the whole time that you're going through the rest of that process after you've started with the B and you've kept going, you need to be ready to farm, to start finding another B, another target property to buy. And this is one of the reasons why it's really important to build a good team. Because if you have a great wholesaler or someone else, a realtor or someone that is looking out for that property, you're just focusing on hiring the contractors and managing all that, talking to the banks, kind of playing puppet master, so to speak, so that you can just keep this ball rolling over and over again and do like what we did and got to 500 rental units. Absolutely right. And you know what? You, in our example here, we're talking about hiring a property manager. So it does cost you money out of the monthly rents and maybe maintenance and work orders and stuff like that. But many people find it to be well worth it because oh, yeah. you get to keep focusing on the larger, bigger picture and bigger dollars of doing <laughs> these projects over and over and over. Exactly. So I, I hope this was really helpful. I, I know we gave a kind of a brief overview of the whole burr strategy as we're freezing here. It is cold um, in here. We are literally <laughs> saying burr right now. Yes. Uh, but we will continue to develop videos that will help you uh, have all the different insights of each one of these different uh, segments of the burr strategy. So please hit that subscribe button, share, and just tap, tap, tap.
Kakaroo that like button. Yeah, add a couple of comments. Tell us about your experience with this. Tell us if you have any questions about the burst strategy and why you think it would or wouldn't be right for you. All right, thanks guys. Best of luck out there.